Hello and welcome to another episode of Gumbo Live. Here's your host, BJ from Board Game Gumbo. Hey, Board Gamers, BJ from Board Game Gumbo here. Back from BGG Con. It's a live episode. We're not in the Gumbo Pot right now. We're actually somewhere on the interstate. I'm not by myself. Hey, hey, it's Jack Rosan. Okay, it's <laughs> Jack doing a Fat Albert impression. But yeah, Jack's over here with me. Jack and I are heading from BGG Con to our next stop up in Arkansas for vacation. But we thought we'd do this cool road episode. Shout out to the Brant, because Brant always does my favorite uh, of his podcast or when he's leaving Gen Con or leaving PAX, he and uh, Larry or he and somebody else will just kind of recap their con. And it's a fun little thing. It's a long drive, so yeah, do I mean, something. We, we got four hours. We got so four hours on a very straight road you know, through Oklahoma. So for those of you who have never been, BGG Con is Board, Geek, Board Game Geek Con. This is the fall edition. This is the one I really like, although I love the spring. This is one I really like because the hotel is just so nice. So much better. It's right on the dart, which we never use. <laughs> but, <laughs> you never need but, to, but. but if I needed to, I would use it's it. There. But it's also just got tremendous space for gaming. You got, the, you got the main library, uh, and it is a lot of fun. For us, it started early. We actually could only make the the Wednesday and Thursday, so me and Jack and Jared came in early uh, to do some pre gaming. Jack, uh, Jared, and I actually got there the night two nights before, and we played um, Wayfarers of the, of the South Tigris, which we've talked about before uh, on previous podcasts. But Wayfarers, a, a great one from Shim Phillips. I want to play the second one. We never could find scholars, though. But the next day, we uh, jumped in with you guys. Yeah, I, I came in. Day zero gaming. This is before zero. the game started, yeah. right? And you had a highlight from uh, from your day that day? And Wolves would probably be my highlight of that day. Well, Wolves? Yeah. So yeah. What is that game all about? Wolves is an area of control. You know, bash them and smash them type game. Uh, so each, each player plays as a faction of wolves and basically it's very every board is the same except the only difference is your faction makes you stronger in certain hexes so for instance you would have a mountain wolves they're stronger in the mountain hexes right and this game is a really great area control i love it it's one of my one of my top easy to play easy to teach you know low intro area of control war games because you do this interesting flip tile mechanic where you have five tiles and each of them represent a hex on the board and they're flipped so on the back side of them they represent a different type of hex on the board out of the five hexes. planning that out is so crunchy planning that out is crunchy and fun and so interesting but each one of us gets one tile that never flips over yeah one tile is always your color and that which is why you're stronger in that hex you can protect your wolves in those hexes yeah Yeah. you protect your wolves and you can dominate which is an action in the game where you take somebody else's piece Take them and off the board. it takes three of a tile. And so because you have automatically the ability to get three in your hex, you're stronger in those hexes. Yeah, that is a fantastic game. I, as you know, that's not one of my favorite style of games. But if I'm going to play one, I'm literally going to pick out the wolves before anything else. Because it takes, once you know the game, it takes 45 minutes. In fact, the game ends a lot faster than you think. Mm. you got you got to rush out, get your wolves, get your bonus tokens. And, you know, do your dominance out there quick because this game is going to be over. I love it. That's from, uh, that's the Wolves that's from Panasaurus, Panasaurus Games. Panasaurus. We actually had the designer, Clarence Simpson, on the show the other day. Oh, okay. oh this guy is so cool. Look for more games from Clarence Simpson because he is a very talented designer. So that's day zero for you. Day zero for me. Really, yeah, really day one, but day zero. Day one for us, but yeah. day zero. My day zero um, game, this is not going to be a surprise to anybody that follows the podcast. It's Challengers Beach Cup. Couldn't wait to play Challengers 2. Challenge is one of my top six games from last year. Really should have been my game of the year. There was just so many good games, it was hard to pick. Um, but Challenge's Beach Cup was just fantastic addition. It's hard to, I almost didn't want to pick this one because in all honesty, it's just like, a, it's not Challenger's 2, it's like Challenger's 1.5, right? Yeah, I, would, I, I think so. It, it adds six more decks. But the only real changes to the rules are just kind of tweaks. A few tweaks. Like, in the first round, instead of drafting two cards, you're going to draft three. Which is great. I love that. Great addition. 
you absolutely can really necessary. get much more deck synergy that if you, way. If you don't ever pick up Beach Cup, add these to your home rules. Look at what just about do to the, Just add it to the just home add, rules. Add it to your home yeah, rules to your regular game. Rules. It's going to change it. And if you didn't like, if you didn't like, if you didn't like regular challengers because you didn't feel like you were drafting and you were really building enough, your deck, yeah, you weren't seeing the deck. Add these rules. The second one is that if you stay in the A deck or and later on in the game if you stay in the B deck, you get a couple of fans. There's no reason not to play that. There's no That's reason. It's a great tweak to the rules. It keeps you a little bit lower. Yep. You still get the bonus of hey, I'm going to grab the C card, but hey, at least now you're because you're choosing those little bit less strong and strength cards. You're gaining some fans, which can really help out. In the the two game. big tweaks to the rules, and again, no reason not to play these, is every person's dog is uh, has a unique ability. That's that was kind of fun. A, that yeah. was fun. You they're know. not like game-breaking abilities, but they're all just enough to make each faction a little bit different. And they can definitely help you plan, you know, how you're going to kind of play your deck. You know, it definitely helps give you an idea rather than I have eight different cards. What am I choosing in the beginning? You know, it gives you kind of an idea of, okay, what's going to synergize with my ability? You know, ability. Yep. Everyone has a different ability. So, and the last tweak to the rules is they give you this little startup ability that everybody has. Again, just a minor little ability, but they were all fun. They were like flipping over a card to do something. You know, so between yeah. the dog giving you a cool power and the, the little card flipping it, it, it really added to me a little bit more punchy punch to the game. Um, the only, I guess, the other thing is that you have the five new, uh, six new factions. I, I didn't see enough cards to know, yeah. but if you like the wacky abilities in the aliens and some of the other ones from the first game, you're going to love these six decks because it seems like almost every card has a cool power. Oh, yeah. I think definitely think so. And I think it's well-balanced, too. I, you know, I think we played with three of the decks, I believe. Yeah. Um, and at least the ones we played with, I don't know if Rob, if like that's something in the book or he just chose these three, but it seemed like one deck was more offensive focused and another deck style had very defensive focused cards like the little mountain one little mountain symbol right, which mountain, you know, not yep. spoil too much all, all those all seem to be very defensive focused yep but jeremy's deck i mean he had some very strong cards super strong but they're but they're from the a deck yeah yeah, yeah. it's He's, not like he was pulling he C's. stayed in the a's yeah. and he just kept pulling these great synergy cards i had this I had this deck that was fun to play. It was just terrible. But it gave me <laughs> tons of cards. By the end of the game, I had 23 cards in my deck. Wow. 23 cards. And I, and I wouldn't bust. I just kept I, I kept running out of cards because they were all ones and twos. Oh. So they would stack on top of each other and draw more cards. But they, they weren't particularly strong. I need to tweak that strategy to draw more cards but have something that powers them up. So oh. the power-up I had was this card that would... Uh, take all the cards in the exhaust pile and add it to the power of the card, mm -hmm. but only on the attack. So mm -hmm. I powered it off every game as an eight or a nine. That's good. But then it was a two again, so it was easy to uh. beat. And shout out to the Board Boys podcast. That was uh, that was Rob and uh, Jeremy. We got to meet Jeremy for the first time. Uh, we, we usually hang out with Rob at all the beach Rob and Cam. But, yeah, I mean, we hung out with them all the time. Hey, TK and uh, and Cam, we missed you, but we had a blast. You'll hear more about Rob and Jeremy in this episode but shout out to them rob brought uh basically rob brought <laughs> half the hot games i think from. half the games i played were just rob's game like we, we, I don't know if we, we played this is the first game. time ever i've been a bgc kind of many times first time ever i went to the hot games room once because if we wanted to play a hot game we just walked over to rob's bag yeah, rob just had it. half of the games in there so yeah. big shout out to the board boys that was fun that's day that's kind of day zero for us Day one for us, day really. One for us, day zero we didn't, for everybody. You know, we weren't there the whole time. And man, we played a ton of games. I, th I think I played eight games that day. That was fun. Yeah, I played right. five and then Careful, I left. Here, 55. All right, so second so second day for us, day one of Beach G Con. Uh, what was your big thing? Was that day uh, was, one? When did you that, play Voidfall? Was that the that day was one? day two? That was yesterday. That was the last day? Yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. Well, but maybe I played, you talk about Last Light? Last Light was day one for me. All right, so what was, what's Last Light? That's from Gray Fox Games and our friend Roy Kennedy, uh, his first published design. What's Last Light all about? Last Light, to me, as, you know, an avid war gamer, is a Euro version of Area of Control War. That's how I think about game, it. 4X game, right? 4X yeah. game. It's really interesting. It's You like those TI4 exploration. You know me. Love TI4. Right? Yeah. I have 13, you know, What's ongoing games. What's the hook of this game? The hook of this game is that everyone's playing at the same time, and you are trying to collect light from the di dying white dwarf star. And every faction needs to collect light to win this game, but you got to go out, explore this galaxy, which has an 
awesome mechanic to the galaxy that I'll let you explain here shortly. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, you're going out, you're exploring the world, you're flipping over your tiles to find out you what is this world going to give you. You do all four of the X's. You, you definitely do. do it. Yeah, you hit everything. Explore, you exterminate. Explore, fight. Exploit. You go out and, and you collect your resources, things. you build your techs, you get your three fancy ships, which look amazing in the Kickstarter edition. Oh, I think they the did. deluxe I edition think, is the way to go, I man. think they did amazing the in that edition. The old giant asteroid rock. The, yeah, asteroids, now, the, the planets. planets that we saw, those come in retail edition. And those plants are amazing. Except those two. That except for the, the, except Rob for the Kickstarter had. promos. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course, you know, Rob All has gold one. Awesome. And, and, and the one that had all the colors. Yeah, all the colors, yeah, the gold, and the one. And I think we had the blue one in that game. And the blue one, yeah. You go out, you explore, collect your resources, and you're trying to collect as much light as you can, which in the beginning of the game, you're not collecting much, but as the game progresses on, and it's, you know, because everyone's playing at the same time, it's a very short game. It's way shorter than you think it is. It's true. And so then you just have this big mass fight in the middle for this dwarf stuff. I think to me that's the, the the elevator pitch for this game is we're really going to play a 4X game and we're going to do it in about an hour. We're doing an hour. I don't know how they pulled it off. No matter the and no matter the no matter the play count. No matter the play count. I think you said it's up to eight. We play up to like eight that? if you have the expansion. With the expansion. And we played six and five. That you played the night both, before I did. Yeah, played six and five, and in both cases it was done. Between an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. I don't know how Roy pulled it off, but the simultaneous play, other than the command and the research. One card. You have, yeah. I think, seven cards to play. Yeah. Seven action cards that you can choose from. And only one of those means that you're going to have to do a little turn order thing. Yeah. But because of the way the game is styled, you're only ta- you know, it's not like I'm going to take this action five to- like five minutes for my... I'm going to do... It's going to take me a minute to do it. And then it's going to be the next person. Yeah. So the next person. Even then, it's... Yeah, yeah command and research slow you down a little bit because you got to do all the fights for the yeah. command. command. The command card allows you to move your ships out and do a fight. And you only, this is a, tw- this is a cool twist. Cool you twist. only fight if you play the command card. So if I go into Jack's sector and he hasn't played a command card, I can just roll dice and blow up his stuff and he can't do anything back to me makes until combat, it's his turn. Makes combat so easy because yeah. you're not. Research you know, takes a little time too because you got to look through the tech tile. You end up getting a lot of research. Think about it. So, I think I had 20. Unresearched text that I was scrolling yeah, I through know. to find. <laughs> so many good ones. Yeah, that's last light. That is thumbs up for me. The first play was rough, Roy. No offense. It was rough for me. I had no clue what I was doing. You know how to get the light out. Second Very play. Rough. I mean, even even though I didn't win, I got 16 points. You only need 20 to get into the end game. Yeah. And I got 16. I mean, I I was a turn or two from uh from hanging in there. So. Yeah, it really sounds like you and Dave were both made that comment to me before we started. Is that y'all didn't really score any points that first game? Oh no! But then I mean, Dave was did either he won that game? I think he won. So he dominated. I mean, with second gameplay, it's really easy to kind of fix your tweak your strategies to what you need to do with a, with another play. Yeah, you just got to see how the last third of the game is. You really have to figure out what this game is is about, yeah. and it's about collecting light from wherever you can get it. You're going to be collecting light. This is not just to take forever to build up your faction and make deals. No. no. Cut a deal with somebody like I did. I cut a deal yeah, with Jeremy. Cut a deal with each other alone, right? Let's focus on these other three guys. Go in, set up your strategy, and you know that's what we did. Jeremy and Dave were punching all the way to the end. They both did great. And let's talk about the amazing mechanic I mentioned earlier. The board, rather, you know, you're in so you're in space. Oh, you're you in really dug that part. I thought you did like that part with the rotation. I dug the rotation. Oh, okay. I thought you. So did. in this game, it's you know you know cardboard. You know we're in a flat space as we see it, but he fixes really that mechanic. It makes it three, dimi- three, dimensional. three dimensional. There we yep. go. You rotate. You have the three circular boards, all with planets on them. The, in the middle has your the white star, the white dwarf star that everyone wants. And you rotate that board. I think y'all said that one goes. One goes sixty, and then the other one goes. Um, what goes it is forty five? It totals up to be one hundred thirty five. So you rotate. So as you move your units out there and, and go and conquer these planets, like you're rotating the whole center of the galaxy as it rotates around this dying and star. You rotate again, and then you rotate again. You rotate. So twice. you're constantly. You know, you may think that this planet next to me. Oh, okay, I'm safe. That's my planet. And all of a sudden, turns, you're on the other side of the galaxy. And you're on the far, and you're like, oh, I have units over there. Right. And so yeah. it just makes it completely change. And I love that level of. Oh yeah, you know we are. Rotating around, but we really figured the system. game. The game that you fl- played, we really figured out how strong it is. You want to get to the center tile for the refresh action, where mm-hmm. you get points for being in the center tile, so where, many where, the gal- where the star is, and you want to be in the inside rings because every time you take the um, your it, own refresh, it's take action, their own refresh action. Yeah, then every then you get that uh, those points there. So the key is scoring points. However, you can get them, get the light. That's one thing I will say that I missed out. I think I missed out on a few points. 
because the tech card, there, there's a lot of text on that tech card. Yeah, it's the only is. one that has a ton of text. I missed it the first game. And there's, there is that. When you build four techs, you get a light per four techs. And I mean, you kind of get bogged down when you're trying to buy all your techs. You, you could, kind of, you kind could of research, that refresh, research again if you had enough, mm -hmm. get a ton of techs, Oh, and then, man. wow, every time you're refreshing the rest of the game, every, you're getting two points. You get two, three bang. points. Not yep. that difficult to put out four eight to four to eight tax. No, no. You know, really some of them pretty simple. Really cheap. So, great game. That's Love the last it. light from Gray Fox Games. Fantastic. Uh, one of my highlights for the con, and so glad that I got to play it twice. That was cool. That was great, yeah. All right, so my game for our second day, day of the yeah, con, which was day, day one. Yeah, day one of the con, day two for us. Day two for us was a game that... I frankly wasn't expecting to like as much because I played it on VG, VGA and it was okay. But again, like Challengers, it's a game you want to play in person. And that's After Us. This cool little deck building game about uh, primates taking over the earth after humans are gone. That was kind of a theme for the con because we played a lot of games that were like that. Like yeah, Boyle Fall, space. Evacuation yeah. is that exact theme. So that's kind of a theme. Uh, earth is dying and we got to get off the planet. So... That was kind of a theme of the con there. We played After Us. One of the things I didn't expect it is, A, it plays so fast. Because, again, so like quick. Last Light, we got six people around the table, yet we're really doing our turns at the exact same time. In fact, we're always like, okay, it's time to go, mm -hmm. time to go, next one. So we're basically, always going, basically we're a deck building game, though. It's a race to eight Absolutely. points. And you're trying, to get your, you're trying to call out the weakest of the primates, get the better cards in, <clears> and use those cards in this really cool mechanic lining up four or five if you spend the rage four or five uh, points not rage uh, uh the, batteries. And the batteries yeah Spin, spinning those uh, that was i think that's a different i don't know if those three cards are every saint for every game oh uh, maybe not i think, I'm not I sure. think though those yeah. are shuffled and can be different but we had four cards and on the cards were these little symbols Things like uh, oranges or and orange. batteries or points even the points yeah absolutely and if you lined up the, the boxes that had those symbols in them and they touched and matched, they made a bigger box that was enclosed. Only the enclosed boxes you then collect from. So the puzzle of trying to line up all of these little boxes into this little puzzle to try to get them to match up, that was, I, I thought it was fun. It, it, Rob kept saying it melted his brain, <laughs> but I just thought it was like, it's only four cards. It's only you four. You kind of slide them around and go, you, kind of go, you know what you really want? Okay, this time I really want to get some uh, You know, do oranges. I need resources? Do I need points? Yeah. Kind of know. Resources, points, slide them around. But the, they're, they're, the tricky part is some of them are conversions. So Dave had this cool mechanic where he was just generating tons of points because he would generate resources. Yep. Convert them into points. Yeah. Generate resources, convert them into points. And he was he was getting pretty good at that. I, After Us, that's a game I actually want to buy. After Us, I, liked it. I think so. It's great game. You could teach Not a hard anybody. teach. Teach maybe maybe a maybe a maybe a five minute teach, if that. Five minutes. So simple. Simple but mechanics, plays quick. Great art. The artwork in that game I really enjoyed. You know, it was very simple. Yep. But you know, really fit the mechanic the, the apes. You know, it wasn't what like every there was four types of apes apes there was a cheaper ape of that type and then a more expensive ape and each of those cards were better you know the bet the more expensive one was yeah, better we than learned the less quick. expensive one those level two cards are they were go. powerful so, so if you but like each Splendor, one had different artwork for them of that ape from a different you know, like profile shot which was really nice if you like splendor or you like uh you know um, <clears throat> gizmos or any of those engine building games this is an engine building game with a deck building twist so i like that Thumbs up for me. I like After Us. I'm going to try to find a copy of that. All right. Back to you for your last day of the con. This is the big game you played. I want to hear all about it. All right. We played Voidfall, which you had told me Rob wanted to play a That's few weeks prior. That's the new Mind Clash game. So Mind Clash has a reputation for making very, very heavy, crunchy, thinky games. This, this is pretty heavy, I crunchy. I think would fit that bill oh yeah i will say i yeah. think i think you they commented after we finished it y'all like y'all look dead it's the crunchiest one it is crunchy what's this game about though this game is a space exploration where you go out and and there are scenarios there's probably 50 scenarios in the books all with different maps so some are a little bit more combat heavy between the players the one we played didn't really have that i don't think any of us ever actually fought each other but there is an ancient civilization but like, I think it's like an AI bot that has come back out and it's corrupting society and corrupting the planets. And so you are basically in a fight against that AI and against all the other players to win this game by scoring victory points, which you do that through a series of different actions. Some are agenda cards 
And so you need to go out, kill kill the AI, and take control of the planets and build up those planets. There are two types of things you can build. You can build guilds. There are a few different, which are your, how you're going to gain your resources. And there are installations, which are how you're going to gain your ships and defend against the AI. And that's pretty much the basics of the game. Oh, man. But it's really crunchy in that there's, I think, 20-something factions to, to play. And each scenario gives you a set of different factions. But depending on what factions are in the game, depend on the text of your game. And each faction has their specialty. So mine was an economic powerhouse. So I got this really cool ability that let me build extra guilds on my home planet. So my home planet, I was producing 30-something resources out of my home planet at the end of the game. Oh, wow. Which, you know, because I'm an econ- yeah. I had this massive engine, because I'm an, ec- an economic faction, I was scoring victory points off of doing that. Where Dave was a more war faction, so he wanted to go fight, he wanted to go control planets, and he scored a ton of points by doing that. That's pretty much Void Fall Is in that a show. game you'd, you'd play again? I would, that, didn't you tell me there's some kind of, camp, not campaign, but scenario-based elements to it, do you think? Yeah, there was, it looked like, and I didn't, I didn't dive too deep into the book itself, Rob had this game. By the way, that was a long teach, Joel. That was well. That's because the the exhibit hall opened up, so then oh, we left to go. So, yeah, two. You watched the video before, right? I, yeah, I did watched the video before. Absolutely, it really it did, did help. Okay, a yeah. few minutes. There's hundreds, maybe not. This might be an exaggeration, but felt like hundreds of different iconography to this game. And so that's about the only thing the video couldn't that's explain. That's Clash, man. It's but, tons of iconography. But once you know it, they kind of all just match together. So it's like once you knew what this arrow meant. If it was next to this thing and you kind of knew what that one was, it was easy to identify. So you just had to learn base 50 symbols and then sometimes they'd be combined. Okay. And you're like, okay, so that did this Once to you that. knew the symbols, it made sense. It made, it made a lot more sense. Because you got symbols to go do things to the board and you got symbols that, for how you're going to score your victory points. They, they try to make, their claim is that they try to make deep, thinky, heavy, crunchy euros that have a theme to them. Like when you're playing Tricarion, Although it's all you know, it's a lot of abstract stuff. You're supposed to be like building up to make these magic tricks and perform them at a show. Mm-hmm. When you're playing Anachrony, you're you're trying to explore this this base or whatever it is, and you're borrowing from yourself in the future. Yeah. But you have to make sure that you're you're never in the same place at the same time because that that creates these time whatever you call them. You know, like, uh, 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 what do they call it? Not vortex, but when when you're when you anomalies anomaly, creates these okay. anomalies. So you, so it's, but uh, but a lot of times the theme kind of gets lost in the abstract, you know, mechanics that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Did you find Voidfall to have some, you know, thematic it was elements? Very, it felt very thematic the whole okay. time. I always felt, especially because you didn't of my, feel like you were just pushing cubes. No, because of my, especially because you know, if you, I played to my faction strength. I very much felt that I was this. I didn't really go combat. You know what I mean? I love combat. So this time I said no. I'm not just going to ignore my faction. I'm going to actually do the factious thing instead of go fight. I only conquered, I conquered more planets in the very last turn of the game than I did the entire game. I think okay. I had conquered three planets outside of the two starting ones. Oh, wow. And so it really felt very thematic too. I'm building up my two home planet, my home planet, plus, you know, you start with a sector. So I just, I was building those two up, placing out guilds so I could build resources. And then all my cards, there are seven action different, I think seven to 10 different action cards you can play. All of them are a little bit different to each faction because you'll gain some from your faction. And so I was optimizing to my faction. So I, ne- you know, I didn't really go to combat because it doesn't help me because I would, I just wanted to build guilds and produce. Is this a game you'd buy or a game you'd just rather play you know, somebody else's copy? What do you think? Do you think you'd play it enough? I think that if I had a group, I would probably try and I, would, I could easily. I think like I would a regular Friday group playing this game. I don't know about I don't know about every week, but at least like once a month, once every two months. Okay. You know, it is a. There's a lot of pieces to it to set up. Well, um, you're lucky. My buddy Jason Gotro from the uh, North Shore owns it. So when he, if he every yeah. once in a while he comes in town, so maybe we can get it together. Okay. And you guys it's, can a, touch it's, me. it's a it's a great game, and the artwork looks phenomenal. I love the theme. Well, it's the, this kind of dark. The artwork is amazing. The artwork man. is amazing. And then Rob, you know, once again, shout out to Rob. That I, setup, I think it's though. the Kickstarter edition. I don't. I don't know if he. I don't think he printed they out made, all of these. They basically make one edition with a lot of deluxe components that mm-hmm. you can buy. So it's, it was it's a the edition. ships looked fantastic. Oh yeah, and the yeah. corrupted ships even more fantastic because they had they had these little orange spikes coming out of the base ship. 
So the artwork, a little dark, which I loved. You know, it, was, it definitely felt like a dark, gloomy world where this AI had taken over. It was kind of like that. So you missed it this morning. Chuck Case came this morning. Uh, my buddy Chuck from uh, mm -hmm. Orlando. He's also a painter. He painted every single ship, including the corrupted ones. Oh, for his Voidfall game? Voidfall. It, it, that looked, that must I have looked mean, awesome. I mean, metallic colors with the shiny oh, looking yeah. Star Wars the ships. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was basically, the theme of the game in my mind is if, is if and if anyone's ever seen the show, the Orville, there's this AI that kind of gets, goes kind of crazy. That's basically what this game oh, really? is. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Is there's this old AI ancient faction that has come out and it's corrupting everybody. Okay. Well, that's cool. That is Voidfall from Mind Clash Games. That, was that basically your number one highlight of the con? Of the con? Yeah, I think so. Of the two. I really enjoyed Last Night, but this one I just really enjoyed. It felt less Euro, but it was still really heavy Euro. But I think that's just because I played a Euro faction. Well, so I did like that. This is where I'm going to lose my cred because I just did a podcast last night with the board boys. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about all my favorite experiences. That's where you swap like usual. Now I'm swapping because, <laughs> well, because I got to play it again. So my, my day three, I played Rats of Wistar, but I also played it again this morning, right before we left. Okay, while, yeah, I didn't uh, get to watch it in the game in. Play, so yeah. I don't know anything about you, it. You were coming in. And uh, so I, I got up early this morning because we wanted to play Rats of Wistar again. We played with the board boys, Rob and uh, Jeremy, and we also played with buddy Chuck Case. Chuck, had, this is his third play. Everybody else had two plays. The requirement was, I know Jack's going to be here between 9 and 9.30. I got to play a game we already know. Cannot learn another game. So we just bolted into Rats of Wistar, and we started flying into it. Since we all knew it, I mean, turns were just super snappy. You had to be ready. Rats of Wistar is the new game from Simone Luciani, one of my favorite act, uh, absolute designers. I can't remember, and I apologize. I can't remember who is the co-designer. I thought it was Nestor Mangione, but it's not. It's um, Sibia, Sibi, I think. And and this game is from um, Cranio C Creations, but it's coming out in America, according to Rob, it's coming out from Capstone Games. So I am talking about a game that's hard to find now, but in a month or so, Hopefully for Christmas, out. we should be able to see it everywhere. And I definitely want to get a copy. What I like is, you guys you guys who watch the, the show, you guys know that we love Simone Luciani's games. We love most of the Italian designers' games the T games, but this game is to me the most thematic of any of Simone Luciani's games that I've ever played. Uh, I, I loved First Rat, which is this racing game where you go through with rats. Okay, yeah. I think you try to get me and mom to play yeah, that. Yeah, you guys didn't want to. Did not want to. It's so much fun. But this is that's more of a family friendly light game. Mm -hmm. This one is a, a little bit crunchier. It's medium, like a Toledum or one of these other type of games, like a Newton. Uh, so not not super super heavy. This is not Lacerda or Suchi heavy. This is more that medium weight Euro, and it's all because of the thematics are just so cool. Have you ever have you ever read the Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim or watched the Nim the Rats of Nim uh, uh, cartoon yep. on Disney Channel or whatever it was? Yep. So that's what this game is, right? A bunch of rats are genetically engineered at the Wistar Institute, which actually exists, by the way. Somewhere wow. in Europe, there's a Wistar University that, like does, a research facility. that does a research on rats. So they cool. kind of based it there, but then, of course, they tweaked it. So the rats are real. Did they? They're genetically, I don't know, they're genetically engineered, and they've got this farmhouse next next door, and they want to build this super city. Uh, in the farmhouse. It, they're, they're going into the farmhouse to get stuff out. Okay. And they're building this super city underground to protect themselves. Ah. So all the carts are hilarious. Like, they want to build a grappling hook. They go into the farmhouse and steal paper clips and rubber bands. And they, oh, they tie they, it all together. They, they, and they use that as their grappling hook, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, there's like, there's like an armadillo as their tank. But all they did was they took an armadillo and they glued uh, thumbtacks all over it. And so it becomes this armored battle <laughs> tank, right? So uh, the first time we played it, it was okay. I was, I was confused by some of the rules. It was a little bit too late in the evening to play it. Second time I played, because I knew the rules this time, I got more into the thematics. On your turn, you take your one of your three my, my, uh, rats, put them on an action, on a wheel. On an action, on a wheel. And that wheel will be as strong as as many rats as you have your little fellow rats in that section okay now you can move them because there's only three sections mm -hmm. you start out with two and you can build up to three four five or six that gives you that many actions of that so if i'm playing tech cards i can get that many tech cards if i'm exploring the farmhouse i can 
explore, explore that many, that many spaces. Okay. If I'm getting resources, I get that many resources. So the crunchy part is making sure you have your mice in the right section. Mm -hmm. Inside the section, though, there's there's a, another wheel, and oh. that wheel is made up of six pie wedges. So you take the big action, okay. and you take one of the smaller actions. Okay. That doesn't matter how many rats you are. You just take that action. It's like that a one time. Action. Okay. And those are all the ones that let you play with the game. You're playing cards and, and making more techs. You're uh, flipping over cards that have missions. So the rat goes to the farmhouse, and his buddy is with him, and the rat gets caught by a trap. Mm. So now your mission, free the rat. Right? The rat. And there's three steps to it, and they're in order, and it's all in a picture on the card, and it's funny. All of the missions are funny. All the tech cards are funny, but it's a, it's just it, yes, it's another one of the Italian Stefan Feld chasing points all over the place. Where are they going to come from? Who's winning? We have no idea until the end of the game. It's oh, one of those that's, games. That's fun though. But that's what awesome. makes it what what elevates it from any of the other games is that it's got this very cool thing that really comes out in the way that you play it. Rats are Wistar shot up after my second play. I love to lay them. If if you like to lay them, that weight. It's not as heavy as Takanu or Tabanusi or any of those heavier games. This is more uh, in that mid-weight right there with Toledo. So I'm going to find a copy, and this is going right in my collection. I'm a, I want to play it. Uh, it's not a tea game, but it is a fantastic game because it's not from Warden Dice. That's who does it, the tea uh, games, okay. Cranial Creations. But it's fantastic. Really, it's my favorite game. I, I think it's my, my favorite game of the con. I need to process a little bit more, but... That was Rats with Star. It sounds like something you'd play. It sounds like something I'd play. It reminds me a little bit, at least the way, I, I don't remember the name of the game because I don't remember the name of games. Me, you, Jared played a game and there was the little wheel and that was your actions. But depending on what number it was, that's the how dice. Many, you I grab so. dice and get that much resources. You grab dice. And then the and flip you, side of the dice was your action. Yeah, it was like your action. That's, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. that is Toledo. By the okay. same guy. Oh, okay. Gianni and, uh, was, Daniel Daniel sounded Tassini. like a really similar mechanic. He loves so. that little mechanic of using the wheel yeah. to get stuff. Oh, it's such a great one. And it's a fun mechanic. Food, I like you it. You grab the food die, the three, and it gives you four actions because yeah. that's the total that's of like seven. They, yeah. 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 Uh, the I mean, the actions and the resources total seven. So I do like that. So similar to that, but instead of dice, you're moving your mice around. And the mice are the strength of the action. That's fine. That is Rats of Wistar from Cranial Creations. And coming soon to Capstone Games. That two thumbs up. If you play it the first time and you're not so sure about it, play it again. You're gonna love it. I really liked it. I remember so, you. I remember you saying that. Like you came in. You're, so you're glad kinda, I played it. You're kind of like man on the game, but it sounds like it really fixed itself. For, it was because it was a lot of a lot of symbols, a lot of text, a lot of cards to look through, and that's just rough on a first play, I especially think, in the hot games room when it's oh, really oh, noisy I, and crowded. And I get distracted. You know? Yeah, people are coming up. People are all over. Yeah, people come in and talk to, to you. In. And nothing wrong with that. It's, that's what we go yeah, to the whole point. It's just hard for me to judge a game by the play in the hot games room. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about our. Let's just give a couple of our, our favorite experiences. It doesn't have to be con related, but the fact that we're out here in Dallas. Did you Did you do anything cool? Oh, absolutely. I love Dallas. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Moving there next year. Moving there next year. My girlfriend lives and works there. I absolutely love Dallas. One of my favorite cities that I've been to. We went to first night, me or second night, I guess. That was the first night. Me, Jared, his buddy, yeah, first and Mike Stephanie. Justin. We went to the Stars game versus Arizona. We I'm Coyotes. now mad. The Coyotes. I'm now mad. We left early because we wanted. I got this amazing looking hat. Uh, but Jared went that to is go. A cool hat. It's an awesome hat. Jared went to go buy something from that. There's an outdoor shop, not inside the arena, but right there in the complex. Oh, it was like a fan shop. There's a little fan shop I in the complex. He wanted to go buy something for his girls. So we left, you know, about 10, when there's 10 minutes left in the third quarter, in the third period. Third period. Yeah. We're, Air, up we're, we're up. We're up. Okay. So we're like, okay, it's fine. No, no, no score going on. Arizona scores two while we're in the shop. So it's now tied. We go into overtime, apparently. I, I just I just looked this up when I'm wanting to know about how the game ended. And thank God, Dallas, once again, did their thing. Scored one in overtime. Oh, another overtime. I forget win that for stat, but I do they know. We love overtime. Man. We love, we love our overtime. Was, Last was year, our, uh, I didn't see who going, scored it. Well, who's the oh, Ottinger. Yeah, Ottinger was in goal. Um, but Dallas, last year, I know we didn't we didn't have great overtime records, so hopefully we're fixing it this year. But that was a great. And then last night, Steph and I, we went dancing at this, at this bar, dance hall, kind of near Denton, uh, called Electric Cowboy. Plays 
well, some of the best music was some good, there. And so we had good music. So we had some great time doing some polka and some waltzing there. Wow. Oh, nice. You know, we don't really like the bar coast. Big dance, big dance hall, huh? Great dance hall. So, so stars and dancing. Stars Two and dancing. Highlights. That's my, that's great my highlights. experiences. My highlights, of course, at, at BGG Con, it's not a working con for me. I go there just to play some new games, play some old games, and hang out with people. And over the years, over these past five or six years, we've developed a bigger and bigger crew. And that's my shout out. My shout out, my highlights were, you know, we've talked about the World Boys a bunch, um, but other people that we played, we played, we got to see Grant Lyon again. Grant is just, if you ever get a chance, you see Grant walking around with a box of games, you stop him, pull him on the search sleeve and say, Grant, teach me a game. A, Grant Lyon is one of the best game teachers out there. He does such a good job. Fantastic. B, he's always got a bag full of the, every mix from a, a good euro all the way down to silly party games, and they're not long, so it's not no. like you're not like you're really killing his time. Not like he's killing. He's got a ton of these little twenty and thirty minute yeah, games, and they're, they're yeah. all fun. But he taught us a fun game, a game I was not expecting to like, the Perfect Wave from the Op. It's just a simple little card game, but there is a time element to it that is very stressful in a really good way. You're trying to make a perfect wave by putting cards in numerical order and moving your board. Your little surfer dude, all mm-hmm. the way to the end. Oh, sir. Okay. But you only have a certain amount of time, and no one knows when the timer's going to come up because the timer is when the deck runs out. Well, if you take certain actions, only one card comes out of the deck. Oh, plenty of time. You take other actions, and all of a sudden, Mark, who I played it with, Mark from New Orleans, is flipping four cards <laughs> to refill the deck. You're like, no. So you know, you you think you've got plenty of time. Uh, I did okay. Grant, this Grant and Mark destroyed me, but. That was that was fun, and and that's another shout out. I got to meet Mark. Uh, I got to meet Mark's fiance Kim. But oh, she I've been stop ha- by. I didn't yeah, I've been hanging out with Mark at conventions for the last two or three years, and that was super fun. We got to play um, a bunch of games together. I mean, we I played uh, just a ton. We played Catch the Moon, one of my favorite little dexterity games where you're trying to put these ladders up to uh, to climb to the moon. We got we played that with them. Oh, we also got to play with the, the Newmans. My streak continues. I always get to play a game with the Newmans at BDG Con or at Southern Board Game Fest. And we, we played uh, the new Cascadia Landmarks. That is a an expansion that I own. I haven't played yet. I'm just throwing it in the box because it's easy to teach, super fun to play. I brought it with us, so if you want to try it while oh, we're yeah, we should, yeah, we should definitely play it. So shout out to Patrick and Cindy Newman. As you this Last time I sat with Cindy, so I got to joke with her the whole time. This time I sat next to Patrick, and the whole time we're playing the game, Patrick and I <laughs> were telling tad jokes or doing silly puns. So, and Cascadia lends itself to that because you're you're doing bear actions and fox actions. So there's plenty uh, of lots of puns, lots of lots really of, done lots puns. Of yeah, puns. I can like only I imagine. Know, one of mine was, um, oh, I, this is gonna go over your head probably, but because uh, you're not from New Orleans, but uh, I was like, oh, look, uh, Kim was Kim was doing really well with the bears. Mm-hmm. I said, Mark, you didn't tell me that she went to. Ursuline Academy. Oh, Ursa. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, it was really dope. It was funny fun. last night, late at night. <laughs> it's not so funny in the daylight. Uh, shout out to our Austin crew. Come on, man. Austin, so Hanging out many, man. with Nick and Dre and Jolly. Will and all the you other guys there. Right. So many. I, I, I can't even remember all the names. Uh, they're so they're up to like 10 or 12 guys from the Austin Game Night crew. They even have their own logo now. But they did, they did get shirts. Games? They had hoodies. The hoodies <laughs> they actually the were really cool. Hoodies, man. So that was fun. And of course, Nick and Dre bring just a pile of games. Oh, man. So, so many like, games. like one of the games I played was, uh, oh, yeah, we played the White Castle with uh, Mark and, that and um, Grant. Yeah. That was Nick's copy. Oh, that was Nick's <laughs> yeah. copy. We played these. We, Grant was like, is there, it's a game you want to play? I'd love to play White Castle. We played one of Grant's games. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I'll teach you uh, White Castle. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we made a trade. He's like, well, you know. I, I made you play a game of mine, so I'll play a game you want to play. The White Castle rocks. I thought I liked the Red Cathedral better as I was starting to play, but by the end of the game, I'm like, no, I, White Castle is fantastic. What a fun game. i got to teach you that one, but I don't yeah, have a copy yet, so i got to get a copy. copy of that. And then, so that was a cool shout-out for the Austin Game Crew. Thank you to Nick and Dre for letting us uh, hang out in the Austin Cave. Uh, a little section we're all no, we, need to, we need to make a banner for that next time i know austin He's game night crew yeah they need a banner for it yeah i got to see chris and caitlin uh ex new orleans people that have moved up to oklahoma that was fun it was a high and buy because my son jack forgot his key key card so i just zoomed whenever you were trying to get out of the parking lot 
oh. I was running to meet you. Oh, yeah. I was running, and this guy goes, BJ. And I turned back. I'm like, hey, I didn't really see. And I looked. I was like, oh, it's Chris and Caitlin. But I hadn't seen it all. So I ran back, and no, I, I didn't have time to visit with him. But I kept running into Chris, so we actually got a nice visit. But next time, Chris, we play a game. Because uh, we, we played uh, last year at Beach Com. We didn't get to play with this time. Thanks to Chuck for teaching us a bunch of games. And uh, I got to see a couple of people. My buddy Evan, who I wanted to play games with, but we were like ships in the night. He got in late last night. All we did was get get a quick hug, and then we had to leave this morning. So yeah, really. but I love Evan. Sorry, Evan, we didn't get to play with you. I saw Mick and Starla from Our Flannery for Plays Games. Didn't get to visit with him. Saw Berkey at Game Toppers. Quick visit. Oh, I got to hang out with Mark, uh, Mark from All Play. Mark is uh, from Mississippi, but he's got a full time job with All Play now, so he's Big moving job. around. So that was kind of that was kind of cool. And Mark and I, we kept our record going. We've done like seven cons together, sometimes working next to each other, and we've never played a board game. Never played the Ever. game. We worked. I first met him when we were doing our very first show at uh, the Louisiana Comic Con. He was running the board game library. Oh, when we when we did we that were, thing we, at, over exactly. at UL during the, when we volunteered. Yeah, did you come with us wearing yeah, yeah. shirts and t-shirts? No, I, I don't think I taught games. I think I played games. Mark was there. Oh, Mark was the one. Teacher. Mark was the one who started the board the board game section at Louisiana Comic Con. So I, that's where I first met him. We're both guys that work with Envoy, but we've never actually played a game together. We were supposed to play Big Top, but we didn't get to play. But next time, uh, I'll see him at another con. So and finally, I got finally got to uh, shake hands with Daryl Andrews. Daryl and I follow each other on social media. I love, I love his games like Sagrada. I've uh, been trying to get him on the show forever. You know, he, he's like, you you tell me the time and I'll make it. I just haven't made it work. So that was cool seeing uh, Daryl Andrews. I'm sure I'm missing some people, but man, we just, we had such a good time seeing a lot of people. So for me, the experience was that. I love BGG. You know, it's definitely my favorite con. I've been to Gen Con. I've been to Dice Tower. Admit, BGG is my favorite con. It's just like gaming. Con. It's I'm, just pure an absolute gaming with 3,000 people, but you don't feel cramped. I know. There's so you much don't. room, so many, you know, you can go reserve rooms. There are three, four layers. Yeah. You just, you don't feel cramped, but you see everybody. No. Nope. just so much gaming. Oh, that was one more person. And that reminds me. I saw Steph uh, Hodge at the uh, VFM. They did a, shout out to BGG Con. They did a much better job for the VFM. It did not feel crowded. But we also played evacuation together. She taught about, she and Rob taught evacuation. And, that was a miss for me, but only because BJ does not do Euro games at 11 o'clock very well. No, I'm just too tired and too brain dead. So, Steph, it was nothing to do with you. It was awesome playing with you as usual, uh, but I, I'm going to try evacuation uh, again another time. So, that was cool seeing Steph from all, all the Meeples of the Rainbow. Um, yeah, I saw Trey and, Trey and uh, Lennox. The, the, BJ Con is like one big family, man. It's, you see yes. all these same people every year. So, next year, Jack... This block the week. Through the whole week. I know. It's block I week off. I missed Dice Blood Tower on the Cock Con. Tower again. I love Dice Tower Con. I want to get it in. In my heart, it's probably still my favorite con. It's just easier to go to BGG it's Con. Just, uh, I got it's it. Only it. A six hour drive to Dallas. It's other so than easy. Sobo, other than so Southern Board Game Fest, oh, of course. BGG Con is my favorite con. I I'm gonna have to say it. No offense to the guys in, in uh, Tampa that we love hanging out with, the Beans and Dice crew. Uh, love you guys. But BGG Con is more of a home con for us. BGG, so. BGG is just everyone goes. You know, I feel it's, it's, it's just, true. I always feel I see everybody. It's true. Yeah, you know, and it's just and the great thing is they they that they offer too, and the, the spring is a lot more kid friendly as as I found you know, as as we it know. It is. So it's, it's really kid. great for those they people. bring his kids in yeah. May again. Those yeah. Dre brought his kids yeah. this summer. You know, it's just so great for people who are like, oh, I can't go to a con. By the way, it's just me. But it's like okay, they have a another still just as good. But it's in the spring, and it's you know how definitely kid friendly. How about Duga on the winning streak, just kicking butt in almost every game he played? Oh, did he? Wow. Yeah, he won Last Light. He got, man, he was just he was he really won he won Wat Rats of Wistar. Uh, oh man, Dave Duga's on the streak. Thank you, Dave, for uh, for letting me uh, crash with you. So um, if I say that he let me crash for free, it's it's locked in, right? I think it's locked in. Yeah, you can't it's, charge it's, it's recorded now. now. It's recorded. It's recorded yeah, Thank now. you, Dave, for letting me stay in the hotel for free. Yeah, you let him win awesome. a few games. I, I did. Think that, I think that's, that's a, a I think thing, that's, right? you know, a trade-off. Oh, and I left him some bread. And we left him some bread and I peanut butter. Some bread. And I made him a peanut butter sandwich. And and did he eat it, though? Yeah, he did. He did eat the he peanut did. butter. Oh, Look at that. The that payment. pays it. There's oh. the payment. Yeah. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right. So that is BGG Con. Highlights for me were all the people playing and the Velvet Taco. Two best tacos I've had in a long time. 
highlights for you. Gaming, of course. Game, 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 game. Game, 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 game. Some dancing. Get to, get to hang out and do some dancing and some yeah. hockey. Hopefully, we can get Jared to come for the... Hopefully, he can actually time. get a ticket next time. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. We'll be able to go the right. whole time. All right, well, that is our wrap-up of BGG Con 2023, another fantastic con. Thanks to Jack for uh, for driving me out to our next destination. Yeah, it was really cool hanging out with you, Jack. Yeah, I love, love to hang out with you. you know, we don't check, have much much more going on, so I'll be moving. So check us out on Tuesdays. Our Twitch Tuesday channel is going to be going strong. We've taken a couple, a little break for these conventions, but we'll be back on at uh, twitch.tv slash boardgamegumbo. Or you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, or X, or Blue Ski, or Blue Sky, however you want to pronounce I it, no clue. Uh, at boardgamegumbo. Uh, we'll be always looking for questions that we can answer in the chat crew on our Twitch channel. If you don't have enough spice in your life, go check out Board Game Gumbo. He's got all you need. Get the spice. And until next time, let's have a bon temps roulette. Out. <laughs>